Bokatov covering him. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Looking here at the screen and behind me this morning already, and I'm sure many of you that have woke up this morning already hearing about the news that uh, uh, Robert Mueller's investigation has led to a surprise arrest to uh, Roger Stone in a pre dawn early raid. And uh, RT is, of course, one of many uh, agencies is reporting. It just happened to be where I saw it this morning. And uh, interestingly, they said the FBI is not being paid right now think, uh, think, uh, thanks to President Trump's government shutdown. And maybe this is why we have a government shutdown. Sometimes you can't help but wonder uh, if there's not more to a government shutdown than meets the eye. But, you know, with all of these agencies coming so close um, in, in their investigations, and I know that President Trump has called this a witch hunt. And, you know, I, I have to admit, for the longest time, I, I thought that that's pretty much what it was as well, uh, until we had the inside information. In fact, even information that I'm sure that Robert Mueller would probably love to have himself uh, about what is going on long before uh, even uh, President Trump ran for office. It, it's been very shocking to us uh, to discover some of these things. And we've shared some of that with you, uh, things that are going on. Now, I don't know exactly what they're talking about as far as the collusion. We just have seen uh, money laundering schemes that are going on, investment properties, real estate, uh, to launder money that certain names have come up in that process. But at any rate, Roger Stone was arrested this morning. And uh, of course, I remember when we were invited, Israeli News Live was invited to cover uh, a Trump rally. And uh, it was kind of interesting. Never got to do that before. Roger Stone was the guest speaker, the keynote speaker at that meeting uh, uh, outside of Orlando. And, of course, when I met him uh, personally, uh, it was interesting because he makes the, the very odd statement uh, as he whispers under his breath. <clears throat> he says, I'm a hardcore Zionist, and so is President Trump. Well, uh, that was a little bit of a shock. I, I was smiling to start with, but I think after the picture was taken and we got that statement, I didn't want to smile very much anymore because... Uh, I'm not too crazy about Zionists, knowing the fact of what's happened to our people by Zionists to begin with. When I say our people, I'm talking about the Jewish people. And I've shared that with you guys many times in the past, even on Patreon. So uh, at any rate, and of course, we'll be back on Patreon as soon as we get back into the studio. We didn't have access to it to load anything while we were gone, so we're a little behind the behind on that. Uh, moving on over to the alreadyhappened.com. Our good friend Lorenzo, uh, actually, and that's on his Twitter page. I don't even think he's loaded this on his website as of yet. He is reporting there that a Roro carrier uh, is unloading in Belgium a massive amount of military, U.S. military equipment uh, for what is called Resolve. And that's kind of interesting to see because I thought we already had tons of military equipment in Europe to start with. But uh, actually, the name of the ship is called Resolve. Uh, and it is unloading there in Belgium today. Uh, moving on over and some other things that are happening, the Iron Dome has been deployed to uh, has been deployed uh, closer to Tel Aviv, also up in the Golan, and this is kind of old news from uh, just the, uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, there has been some skirmishes uh, across the border. Um, it has been alleged that uh, just coming from Syria thus far by Israel, it's not uh, determined who actually has fired over some some rockets from that area. I always keep in mind too, because we know how things want to be stirred up to justify a war. Um, when it, if they said it come from uh, Lebanon, then I would believe that it is Hezbollah. There would be no question about that because Hezbollah and Israel are always at each other's throat. Um, and Hezbollah is definitely a danger for Israel. But when it comes from Syria, and I know that Israel, even on the Jerusalem Post, has openly admitted that uh, they have armed a jihadist over there, I'm always a little hesitant to say, well, it was the Syrian government or the, uh, even the Iranians, for that matter, that fired the missile, because it could be the jihadist, for all we know. You'd need really an independent confirmation on that. And uh, again, Israel, with their right to support uh, defending themselves, uh, I understand that, but I question the methods. And let me tell you why. 
One reason why I question the methods because the Israeli intelligence sees the planes that are being loaded with these uh, weapons. And they've mentioned here recently that it's commercial uh, uh, airlines that have been bringing in all these weapons from Iran. But yet they know when they loaded it in Iran and how they uh, transferred over, landed in Damascus, and then went on into Lebanon and landed in Lebanon. If the Israeli military has this type of intelligence, which they do, and I know they do, uh, then the best way to preserve civilian life is if you're going to take it out because you know that, uh, that this, uh, this equipment is being transferred, why are they waiting for the plane to get on the ground and unload and then be transferring towards Lebanon if you know this is what's going on? Why not take that plane out over a desert area where there's very little risk to any life whatsoever? You're monitoring it the entire time to start with, and if that is the objective, do it in a way to where you can preserve life in Syria as well, and we don't put Syrian civilians at risk. Um, these are the things that I'm, I'm watching and things that I realize that could be done, uh, and, and, and it would not be so suspicious uh, for that matter either. So um, at any rate, that's my thought on these things here this morning, guys, is we are here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we do have, by the way, for those of you that want to try to come to P.F. Chang uh, this evening at 3 p.m. meeting, we have about three seats still available, uh, three or four. I think it's, I think it's three, though. Uh, so if you email me, uh, it's stevenbenoon at gmail.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-N, Benoon, B-E-N-N-U-N, at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description below. And uh, I have already sent confirmations to everyone else that has emailed us already. Uh, so just double check your email. Make sure you got that. The address, and again, that'll be in the description below, but it is 1415 15th Street, Denver, Colorado, 80202. Uh, the phone number is 303-260-7222. Now, it is not, P.F. Chang does not have a banquet facility, anything like that. They just told us we, we did a reservation for 20 people. That was as large as they could do. Uh, over, they said it's over in the kind of the back area of the, of the building. And, of course, being at 3 p.m., we kind of figure it's less people will be there during that time. And uh, we just we kind of have to order something from them in order to have that right to be able to sit there. So it'll kind of be stag. Everybody just take, be on their own on that. And uh, but at any rate, uh, we got room for a few more. So if you can email us by lunchtime today, we need to have and make sure you send your name. Um, you know, and again, just be first come, first serve. Uh, whoever we get there, we don't really expect more than 20 anyway. But anyway, we'd love to be able to meet you. We're going to have a couple of hours there to spend some time together. And we'll talk more then. Anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you. Thank you for your support for this work, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there. Uh, also, in the description, we have our address there. Thank you very much, and shalom.